Good morning, guys. Hope everyone's having a happy new year thus far. I'm going to be doing a reaction video. I've done very few of those on this channel, but I want to check out uh, a new video from SpaceX that they released actually on the 29th of December. Not quite New Year's Eve, but obviously something to kind of ring in at the new year for SpaceX. And it's their Mission to Mars video that they've done at various versions versions of over the years, and I'm just interested to see what kind of changes they might have made. Um, and also, I've never really done any commentary for you guys on this actual video to give you an idea of just how accurate it is and what sort of things uh, still need to be done in order to actually get us to Mars, because this, after all, is Elon Musk's most important objective. So. Not going to spend a whole lot of time talking to you any further. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. SpaceX Starship Mission to Mars, the latest version, December 29th, 2023, but watching it for the first time in 2024. All right, starting off pretty cool. We got the same music as we had in the previous one. Boca Chica. We'll see if there's any real changes to the to the Starbase facility or anything like that. Well, it looks pretty similar. Two launch towers. Same Tesla vehicle, I guess, heading towards us. Yeah, not a lot of changes as far as all of that is concerned. And once again, there's going to be things, changes I'm probably not going to notice on this first watch through. So I would like you guys to comment if you see anything that I have missed. Okay, tanks are frosty, just like the previous one. All of that is pretty similar. Engine count and all that. Yeah, of course, why would that change? Engine count on Starship has been pretty consistent for a while now. Although, as we all know, it wasn't always 33 engines. And there she goes. All right. So far, pretty similar. Oh, they changed the color. Hold on, let's go ahead and stop that for a second as soon as we get a good look at it. Looks like they've changed the color of the exhaust. Yeah, the exhaust color has changed a little bit. Um, and maybe they just because they have a better idea of what the exhaust uh, looks like based on the uh, the launches that they've had. Maybe their digital artists prior to that didn't really know what everything was going to uh, look like during ascent. But yeah, it looks like that they they changed all of that. One thing that I think is really cool um, about this part is the fact that you still have the uh, the tank chill on the orbiter. You can see uh, those chill, that chill still in place, obviously, because the orbiter hasn't used any of its propellant or any of its oxidizer. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that's definitely a different color there. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now this is something I'm anticipating a change on. Let's have a look here. Yep. There it is. Okay. Yeah. So the hot staging, that should come as a surprise to nobody that we've got hot staging as a big part of this promotional video. A really dramatic change actually in what SpaceX is doing. All of us know about it. What I'm interested in though as to why SpaceX really regards this as being such an important part of the process. Clearly, since they're including it here, you know, they regard this as being a key part of Starship's function at this stage. They're not looking at abandoning this. This isn't just some sort of, you know, experiment they're doing on a whim. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. This is something they're going to stick with. I mean, obviously, it's going to increase the payload capacity of Starship. What it also might do is it may improve the payload that Starship can deliver to higher orbits. 
And that could be very important because if Starship can only deliver big payloads to low Earth orbit and to no other orbits, then it's going to have a hard time competing for some of those more geosynchronous orbits or MEO locations, that sort of thing, if it has to go through a lot of refueling in order to get there. And it's going to complicate the process, and it could also be a considerable amount of time before it can actually carry payloads like that because it could be a while before they master the refueling process. Um, regardless, this is a big part of what SpaceX is planning to do. We still don't know if the hot staging was actually partially responsible for the destruction of the booster. It could be that the negative G-forces, when those engines ignited and essentially stopped the booster cold in its tracks, it may have interfered with the propellant and the oxidizer moving through the propulsion system. Uh, it could have been sucking air at that point um, or gas instead of liquid, which is never good for a rocket if that happens. Once again, can't be certain about any of that until we see a, a final report that the FAA receives and if SpaceX even tells us about all that. But that, I think, is going to be what I'm going to talk the most about in this uh, reaction video is the hot staging. And there it is. Cool looking stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, man, that staging looks cool there. All right, and then there goes, yeah, there goes the booster. Oh, yeah, engines igniting. That looks a little different than the, at least I think it looks a little different than the way they did that previously, the color. And then two engines firing up, it appears, um, for the final descent. That, I think, has not changed either. And then, of course, the chopsticks performing the capture maneuver. Um, that's going to be really cool to see when that actually happens. All right, so now I don't, this doesn't look any different either. Starship in orbit. Let's see if they changed anything about the refueling process. All right, here they come. And we've got, no, I want to talk real briefly about this. Um, these, this refueling process is most probably not how SpaceX is going to be doing it in the long run. It's going to be necessary for a number of tankers to refuel a propellant depot that is not going to appear the same as a normal Starship. There's no need for it to have flaps and fins. As a matter of fact, if it had flaps or fins, that would be, have a very negative impact on, on its function because it would add unnecessary weight and you're going to want to keep weight to a minimum on your propellant depot. Most probably the depot is going to be similar to one of these starships that we've seen without the flaps and fins, just the plain cylinder kind of versions of starship that we have seen thus far out at Starbase. And so then the tankers are going to gradually refill the propellant depot until it has 1,200 tons of, uh, of methyl ox loaded up and then it will be able to transfer all of that methylox all at once to Starship. Um, so you're never actually going to see, except in very unusual circumstances, two Starships actually um, docking with one another for a refueling mission, unless there's some sort of specific need for it. But the, the standard operational procedure is going to be um, Starship docking with a fuel depot. All right, let's keep it going. We're not too far away, actually, from the end. All right. And Starship's refueled. Like I say, there may be other changes here. Feel free to put it in the comments if you notice anything. So one Starship has to be completely refueled, by the way. So full tanks, otherwise you get propellant slosh and that makes Starship difficult to control, any rocket difficult to control. So you're gonna wanna make sure you completely refuel it. Okay, all this again, looking very much the same as the previous video, Starship making its way to Mars completely refueled. And now after a lengthy journey, arriving at the red planet. Actually, going through space to start off with here first, it looks like. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think it... Once again, I'm feeling a little embarrassed here. I, I don't really recall 
all the steps that were in there. I'm pretty sure all that was there as well the last time. Now it's arriving finally um, at the Red Planet. You can see the polar ice caps there. Um, and let's see if they show any different surface features than they showed the last time. One of the big things that they showed is uh, Olympus Mons. In the previous video, yep, there's Olympus Mons again, um, the biggest volcano in the solar system, um, the size of Arizona, and then there's the other major surface feature on Mars, the Valles Marineris, um, a, a super Grand Canyon with eight kilometer deep canyon walls up, and then here's, okay, the colony, and re-entering starships, many of them. Now, in many ways, you know, I'm thinking that in spite of what we've seen so far in this video, and obviously we've been watching Starship, we're skipping ahead in time here, I think. I mean, this initial, the initial video is depicting the, perhaps the first mission to Mars, you know, being undertaken with a starship that we recognize. By the time we get to the point to where we have cities on Mars, we have all of this established infrastructure and all that, starship is not going to resemble what it is right now very much. Um, it's gonna be, probably be very, very different from what it is currently, given how quickly all of this evolved. So I would say that, uh, once again, promotional video, maybe we don't want to read too much into this, but I would say that, uh, that this is skipping ahead in time a considerable amount uh, to get to this point where we are landing on Mars, on a populated Mars. Of course, but then that's a conventional looking starship though. So, not exactly the way it's gonna be. Now this is, this one right here, as dramatic as this moment is with the airlock door opening and looking out onto the red planet and we've got the, the four astronauts here, this wouldn't work. Um, what we're looking at, or this appears to be the current kind of vacuum suits that the SpaceX astronauts wear inside Crew Dragon. These kinds of suits would not work on Mars. A massive change in temperature and pressure like this, even in a vacuum suit. Vacuum suit will provide momentary protection from this kind of environment, but you need a full-fledged spacesuit um, in order to survive in this kind of environment. And massive pressure differential, huge temperature uh, shift, temperature change, obviously, that sort of thing that they would be experiencing even in the airlock. You know, of course, you would have the temperatures equalized in the airlock, but still, it would be so cold. Um, these kinds of suits are not really appropriate um, for Mars. They're only appropriate for emergencies if you, if you lose pressure inside uh, the spacecraft. What I am interested to see, since we have an upcoming mission, at least in theory, this year, where there's uh, uh, tourists who are heading up to orbit on a, on a Crew Dragon who are supposed to be carrying out the first ever commercial spacewalk. And of course, SpaceX, they're going to have to design a spacesuit for this. And presumably they already have, or they're very nearly done with the job or whatever. Or perhaps they're going to buy a suit from somebody, perhaps Axiom Space. Hard to say what's going to happen. But once those new suits are introduced, I'm pretty sure that you're going to see that in the closing moments of the video. Let's go ahead and just see if there's anything else. Kind of doubt it. And there we have Elon's vision of a populated Mars. Something I won't live to see probably, and Elon may not live to see it either, at least not at this stage. And that's pretty much it. Cool stuff. And uh, that's, uh, that's the entire video. Like I said, didn't have a tremendous amount of time today because I'm about to head to pick up my son at Heathrow Airport. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Like I say, not a lot of changes. The hot staging um, was the major change. Um, and also, like I say, the orbital refueling, that's something I think that is going to change dramatically once uh, SpaceX unveils their fuel depot design. Um, and all of that 
that's going to have to be happening really soon because Artemis 3 is an important obligation for SpaceX um, and they're going to have to start delivering soon on all of that. And a fuel depot is going to be an important part of the architecture um, for that upcoming mission. So I'm looking forward to seeing what SpaceX has for us in 2024. And I have a feeling that the next version of this promotional video that we see is going to have some very dramatic differences. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you so much for your support in 2023. And I'm looking forward to a fantastic 2024 where we will stay angry about space.